Hey, this is Khurram Nasir and you are watching Optometry with Khurram and today's topic is the very important type or technique of the retinoscopy and that is called the Mohindra retinoscopy. The Mohindra retinoscopy. So, Mohindra retinoscopy is also called the near monocular retinoscopy as well, right? So, first of all, we will discuss about the indications of the Mohindra retinoscopy, right? So, the indications are uh, the infants, the toddlers and the children, right? And those patients, those infants, those toddlers and those children in which the cycloplegic drugs are contraindicated, are not allowed, in those patients, we will perform the Mohindra retinoscopy, right? So, if we are, the question is, if we are not using the cycloplegic drugs, so how we can paralyze, how we can relax the accommodation? So, this is the question. I'll explain this question in next few minutes, right? So, first of all, uh, we have discussed about the indications, right? And now we will discuss about the prerequisites or the requirements of this type of retinoscopy, right? So, remember one thing that your room should be totally darkened, right? We required a totally darkened room, not dim light. I am saying that room should be totally dark, right? And now the working distance must be 50 centimeter, right? The distance between the retinoscope and that patient, right? That working distance must be 50 centimeter, right? Now, the next important thing is the target, right? So, the target should be the target of the patient, right? At which target the patient will fixate, right? So, that target must be the light or streak of the retinoscopy. The patient will fixate the patient will target at the light or the streak of the retinoscopy so the question is how an infant how a toddler will follow your instruction if you tell your patient which is an infant which is a toddler if and if you are instructing him that he or she that toddler or that infant should look at the light he will not follow your instructions right because here he is he is an infant he is a toddler so he or she will not follow your instruction so that's why the room must be darkened maximum dark room right we need a maximum dark room so in that maximum dark room the patient that infant or that toddler instinctively voluntarily will look at the light of the retinoscope right and still if he or she is not uh, looking at the light of the retinoscope then you will use some twice to attract that patient to look at the light of the retinoscope. But this, this, these are your skill as a clinician. It's your responsibility to make your patient to look at the light of the retinoscope, right? So why the target of the patient should be light of the retinoscope? The reason is, remember that the light itself is a non-accommodative stimulus. As I said, we are not going to use any cycloplegic drug in the Mohindra retinoscopy. So the question is the why then how we can relax, how we can paralyze the accommodation of the patient. So there are three different things and with the help of these three different factors we can relax or we can paralyze the accommodation. We can relax the accommodation and number one is the light. Remember that the light is a non-accommodative stimulus right. If you are looking at a light, if you are looking at a dim light right, so that dim light is a non-accommodative stimulus that dim light will relax your accommodation right so the dim light let me repeat this the dim light if you are looking at the dim light the accommodation of yours will be relaxed that dim light will paralyze or relax your accommodation so that's why we use light of the retinoscopy as the target of the patient and as i said that uh, this is called the monocular the near monocular uh, retinoscopy right so when you will perform the retinoscopy the one eye of the patient must be occluded right and this this thing this occluding or the one eye if you are performing the Mohindra retinoscopy in this eye this fellow eye will be occluded right and why we are doing this we are doing this that if we occlude this eye one eye of the patient it will break the fusion right and if the fusion will be break it will affect the accommodation it will relax the accommodation as well 
so we have two different we have discussed about the two different factors the factor number one which can relax the accommodation and that was the light source if the patient is looking at the dim light of the retinoscope so the accommodation will be relax and the next factor which can relax or paralyze accommodation is monocularity right patient is looking with the one eye you are dealing with right so if the patient is one eye of the patient is occluded one of the patient is blocked this can lead your patient to relax or paralysis of the accommodation right this thing will relax or paralyze your accommodation right so these are two different things so now let's discuss about the working distance right so working distance is 50 centimeter as i said right so with the help of the formula we d is equal to 1 over f let's convert this centimeter into diopters so formula is d is equal to 1 over f as we have discussed in the static retinoscopy so 1 over 50 right so this is in centimeter to convert this into the meters we can write this 100 over 50 right and when we will calculate this then we will solve this 100 over 50 centimeter the answer is 2 diopters right so the working distance which was 50 centimeter we convert this 50 centimeter into diopters and that is 2 diopters right and let me tell you the very important the crux and the very important uh, thing of this lecture and that is the tonus factor the tonus factor in mohindra retinoscopy is 0 0.75 diopters right this is tonus factor you can consider this value the 0 0.75 as the tonus factor and you can consider this value as the normal lag right so what is the normal lag of accommodation you know very well uh, you can watch my last videos uh, on mem method monocular estimate method of dynamic retinoscopy you can watch the video on shears method of dynamic retinoscopy let me tell you that what is normal lag of accommodation and what is normal lead of accommodation the normal lag of accommodation is actually the lag of accommodation is actually if your eye if your lens required uh, two diopters of accommodation if the need of the lens is two diopters of accommodation but your brain is helping your lens with one diopters of the power it means your brain is giving less power than the requirement that is called the lag of accommodation right and lead lead of accommodation if you if your need is plus two and your brain is giving plus four more than the normal more than the need that is called lead of accommodation right so this 0 0.75 is the normal lag right of the eye of the crystalline lens right so you can consider this value 0 0.75 as the tonus factor your choice you can consider this 0 0.75 as the normal lag so you have to deduct this tonus factor from this working distance so our working distance is two diopters right 2.00 diopters right and the tonus factor or the normal lag which we have to deduct is 0 0.75 so when we will deduct this 0 0.75 from 2 the answer is 1.25 and remember that this 1.25 is actually the compensation factor so the compensation factor was 1.25 in every case of mohindra retinoscopy the compensation factor will be 1.25 right so for example we perform mohindra retinoscopy right we have draw we have drawn an optical cross right and at 90 meridian the neutral point was for example plus 4 and at 180 meridian the neutral point is plus 3 for example but remember one thing this the mohindra retinoscopy only an expert can perform this type of retinoscopy mohindra retinoscopy will be performed by an expert right when you will put a streak inside the patient's pupil you have just two to three seconds to differentiate that either it is a with movement or against movement just two to three seconds in those two to three seconds you will decide that the patient is hyperopic or myopic either there is a with movement or against movement inside the patient's people in just few seconds in just two to three seconds right you will not put the streak inside the patient's people for a long period of time right you have just two seconds you have just three seconds to differentiate either it is with movement or against movement or you just have two to three seconds to neutralize that patient remember this is very important 
so for example at 90 degree our neutral point is plus 4 and at 180 degree the neutral point is plus 3 right so we know very well that our compensation compensation factor is 1.25 so So we will deduct the compensation factor from the both of the values right and we will draw another optical cross so if we deduct 1.25 from plus 4 the value is 2.75 plus 2.75 right so if we deduct 1.25 from plus 3 it will be 1.75 right so we can consider you we can consider plus 2.75 as the spherical correction and for the sake of cylinder we will go from this value to this value and that is 1 right so the difference between 2.75 and 1.75 is 1 right so what about the sign of the cylinder actually we are going from more plus to less plus so we are actually moving towards the minus direction so the sign of the cylinder will be minus right and axis of the cylinder are 90 degree this is same as in the static retinoscopy so why we consider 90 as our axis of the cylinder because our spherical correction was 2.75 and 2.75 is at the 90 degree at the 90 meridian so that's why the axis of the cylinder are 90 degree so that's all about the monitor retinoscopy we'll see you in the next videos